The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, Heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Many of us are familiar with the expression, what would Jesus do? However, I would suggest that we consider it another way. What did Jesus not do? Well, we know Jesus did not try to rule over others. Even if many at that time believed that as the Messiah, he would save them from the oppression of Roman rule. Even when tempted in the desert with complete dominion over mankind, Jesus refused power. He rejected controlling others. And what about judgment? Jesus was critical of the Pharisees, those who cast judgment on the people. Yet Jesus specifically stated in the Gospel of John, I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. He refused the role of judging who was pure and who was sinful. Lastly and most importantly, Jesus did not treat others as inferior to him. In fact, as God's son, he did the exact opposite. As the Lord, Jesus literally came down to earth and lived with the worst of sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes, lepers, the outcasts. As his ministry came to an end, he even got down on his knees to wash the feet of his disciples. So as much as Jesus did do, it is different perspective to look at what he did not do. When we reflect on all these things that Jesus did not do, one virtue stands out. One character trait rises up, and that's the simple virtue of humility. What is humility? One would say that it is being modest and respectful. Others looking at Jesus' life and model would say, it was a life of giving about oneself, about others rather than yourself. I suggest that today, that humility is exemplified by this feast, the feast of the baptism of our Lord. Now think about what that means. Think about what the sacrament of baptism means. It is a cleansing of sin. It is a reception of God's grace. It is a renewal of faith. It is the sacrament that ties all of us Catholics together. Our Lord did not need these things. He was without sin. His faith was strong enough to sustain him through the crucifixion. And he is a body through whom we find communion. And even his own cousin, John the Baptist, did not feel worthy to baptize our Lord. As he said, I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. Yet Jesus humbled himself to become baptized. He was 30 years old and ready to start his ministry. A ministry that would save us all and change the world forever. How did he start that ministry? With his own baptism. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us? 
What does that mean for you, our newly elected leaders, who have been baptized and now prepared to lead the Commonwealth? If you have all the power, if you have the ability to judge, if you have the power to rule, what virtue does Jesus counsel us to start within our daily life as leaders? Dear leaders, in a way, today's Mass is your baptism. In fact, as Catholics, we are called every day to renew our baptism. But today is special because just as Jesus began His ministry with His baptism, you come here today to begin your ministry of public service with your own baptism. And as you do that, what can you learn from Jesus? Perhaps instead of using the saying, what would Jesus do? You might consider what he did not do. He did not try to rule over others. He did not judge others. He did not treat others as inferior. As public servants, many would suggest that that's not a bad place to start. It is easy today. But you know, sometimes when the mantle of authority power and control is placed in your hands, we realize that many often forget and turn away. Think about that as we know that the time of accounting, of being good stewards for what we have done and what we have not done comes for each one of us. So my dear leaders, rather than ruling over those who voted for you, look to serve them. Rather than judging those who voted for you and those who opposed you, reach out to understand them. Empathize with them. Love them. And rather than treating others as inferior, call upon your greatest Catholic virtue and humble yourselves as Jesus did when he was baptized. You have all been called to this vocation of public service. In your calling, you may relate to the opening of today's gospel. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. Just as the people in the gospel were filled with expectation, the people in our community are also filled with bull and expectations. Yes, you are not John the Baptist, you are not Christ, but you are Christians. You are our leaders. You are our Christian leaders. The way is within you. Seek to follow the way and lead as you are charged. And the people are filled with expectation and asking in their hearts whether you will lead them with service, understanding, and above all, will you? Can you lead with humility? So let today's feast of the baptism of the Lord be your baptism as well. Let today be your opportunity to cleanse yourselves, to renew your faith, and to begin a ministry of humble service. Why? Because that is indeed what Jesus would do.